Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out at the range with a couple of SKSs. The SKS is kind of an iconic rifle. The US military went up against them in Vietnam. They were developed during the, uh, towards the end of the Second World War. They went into service around 1945 in the Russian military. And it's just, again, kind of an iconic rifle. Now, over the years, we've seen them flow into the United States. Back when China was importing guns still, a lot of Chinese SKSs came into the country and they're really, really affordable. You could get them for $100 or less in many cases, but we're talking over 20 years ago. Since the shutoff of Chinese imports, we've seen some Russian SKSs come in that were arsenal refinished that were really beautiful. We've seen Yugoslavian SKSs come in and, and from other countries. But there's a, not only are there a whole host of different SKSs out there, but they've become more and more expensive. So the days of $125 SKSs are long since gone because the supplies have dried up in Europe and certainly because of the um, import ban from the Chinese factories or just from China in general. So one of the, my favorite SKSs is the Yugoslavian SKS, and this is what I have here. And this is from you know, the former Russian satellite country of Yugoslavia, uh, which is no longer in existence, but this is correctly called a Yugo SKS. And what makes the Yugoslavian SKS so much different than the other rifles that I have in my collection, and just SKSs in general, is all this busyness going on here on the muzzle end of the weapon. So we have a unique muzzle device that is intended for grenade launching, we have a gas shutoff right here, which you can push over, which allows you to flip up your ladder sights, again, for rifle grenade launching, and it shuts the gas off, so you can fire grenade launching blanks. Fold that away, put your gas back to the on position, and you're ready to go. The Yugos, as many SKSs do, pro probably most of them, has a folding spike bayonet as well. It's 7.62 by 39 caliber, or chambering, and this is your typical example of what a Yugo SKS would look like. Serviced, uh, I mean, well used, um, still serviceable, but the stocks are gonna be kind of boogered up. Now I've seen some really, really pretty ones, but that's not really the norm. Most of them are gonna be in this state, and when you get them, they're gonna be packed in cosmoline. You can still see remnants of cosmoline up on the folding spike bayonet and stuff like that. Cosmoline can be very difficult to get off the gun. So what I wanna show you is an SKS that's coming in right now that I found at JNG Sales that is a take on the Yugo SKS, but it's a really interesting different variant of this particular rifle, and that's what I'm gonna show you this afternoon. The SKS feeds from a 10 round internal box magazine, although the Chinese did make a few that had uh, AK style magazines, those were built for export. I do have one of those, but they feed typically from an internal box magazine. The face of the bolt is a stripper clip gu guide, and you take a 10 round stripper clip and just push it in all the way down and then run the bullets down out of the clip into the 10 round magazine. And then you could discard the uh, stripper clip, but these are becoming collectible as well. Let's make sure that the uh, rifle actually picked up a round, which it did. And we're gonna shoot this original SKS, Yugo SKS, and I'm gonna show you this new one that J&G Sales has found for us. That 7.62 by 39 really tears up that challenge steel target downrange. Very shootable rifles, very accurate. Now, let's take a look at this new rifle I've discovered on the internet. So here it is, guys. The new, well, new to me and in new type condition, Yugoslavian M59-66. This rifle is obviously an arsenal refinish, but it's in absolutely beautiful shape. This thing looks brand new. It also has the, the bonus of not being slathered in cosmoline. This is exactly how the rifle was shipped from JNG Sales. I was really surprised to take this out of the box. I was kind of hopeful that it would look this good, but I didn't really expect it to look this good. Now there are some differences between this rifle and the traditional Yugo uh, SK SKS, and let's point what those are out. I mean, it should be obvious once you look up at the muzzle end of the rifle. First of all, we still have the gas shut off, but we don't have the grenade launching sight on the front sight block anymore. It's just, it's deleted. We don't have the grenade launching muzzle device anymore. It's been replaced by a birdcage type flash hider. And the bluing is absolutely perfect. So it's obviously been uh, stripped down, re-blued, probably new stocks put on the rifle. Uh, they're stained and then varnished, lacquered it looks like a little bit. Um, just an absolutely beautiful gun. Has the same folding bayonet. This one has, you know, you can see the blood groove in it right there. It still latches the same way. It latches right here. The Chinese ones will oftentimes slip up over the muzzle, but because of this extended muzzle device, it locks onto this ring right here. 
And that seems to be the only purpose of that ring is to lock the uh, bayonet in the extended position. The story on these rifles, though, we don't really know. I've tried to research them and find out what the story is, but it, it seems that not a lot is known about these particular guns other than they are from Yugoslavia. They are based on the Yugoslavian SKS. But who they were built for and why, we don't know. They could have been Arsenal refinished for export. Uh, rumors have been circulating that this, these were refinished uh, and reserviced at, at the Arsenal for a police contract, a civilian police contract. We don't know. But what I do know is this is one very sleek, clean looking SKS. And if you're looking for a brand new SKS, this is about as close as you're gonna get, guys. Now, the price, again, for this particular model is, is $469. So the price has gone up quite a bit. And I know a lot of you guys are gonna com complain about that. But if you want an SKS that's in it as unissued condition or about as new as you can get, this is a great option for you. Now, I haven't been shopping on Gunbroker for a while for SKSs, so I don't know what the Chinese SKSs are going for, or even the Russians anymore. But I'm going to guess that they're fairly close to 400 bucks for a good quality one in nice shape. This one feeds just like the other one from Stripper Clips. Let's go ahead and shoot this rifle. I've only shot a few rounds out of it uh, already, but I wanted, I wanted to keep it as clean as possible because I want to break the gun down and show you guys what it looks like on the inside. There we go. So perfect function. I just inspected the rifle when I took it out of the box, made sure the bore was clear. I didn't lube it. This is the exact same condition it was in when I took it out of the box. I just wanted to show that to you guys. So it functions perfectly. Let's do a little bit more shooting with it, tear it down and show you guys what it looks like on the inside and talk a little bit more about the SKS. <laughs> Gotta take that last one, huh? I have to go fast. All that guy had to do is stand still. He'd been perfectly safe. Oh, I was aiming for the guy to his left. Ah. All right, let's take a look now inside of the Yugo SKS. Here is my original military as used condition SKS from Yugoslavia. And here is the one from J&G Sales I recently discovered. So you can see the similarities and the differences. And you can see just how clean this new one is. Again, new to me, Arsenal refinish, obviously. All right, I'm gonna set the original aside. I'm not gonna field strip them both for you. Most of you guys have probably seen an SKS field strip before, but I'm gonna go through it here really quickly for you just so I can show you what the insides of the gun looks like. So first, you're gonna make sure that the chamber is empty. You can do so very easily by pulling the bolt to the rear. It'll lock open on an empty magazine. You can see the chamber, we can see it's clear. I'm gonna pull the bolt slightly to the rear, push down on the follower and ease the bolt home so I can relieve the spring uh, tension on the recoil spring in the rear. All right, now that we have it clear, you take your finger, there's a little rotating lever here. Rotate this up, pull it up out of its detent, and then you can pull it across, and your top cover will pop off under pressure from the recoil spring. Pull your recoil spring and guide rod out. Now you can draw your bolt to the rear. Once it stops its rearward travel, you can just lift it up. There's the carrier, and there's the bolt. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe these off. This is exactly how they they shipped. You can see there's kind of a blue grease on there from the factory. I'm gonna wipe that off and replace it with some of my own. Very easy guns to service in the field. It's cold out here today, my fingers are kind of numb, but I'm still able to easily strip the gun. Wipe off that grease. Now you can see the condition of that carrier. Let's wipe off the bolt here really quick. Now recently I did a video talking about an update to the STG44 being built by uh, HMG. And what you'll find very interesting, or I find interesting, is that this SKS operates pretty much the same principle as the STG44. This is your locking surface back here on the rear of the bolt. You have a hook, 
looks just like the S STG, just a smaller version of it that pulls the bolt back and up out of its locking recess. What, it's interesting to note that this rifle was in development around 1943. The STG 44 was already seeing field trials in 1943. This gun went into service around 1945. Now there's some rumors out there that these were actually used during the Second World War, and I can't find anything to substantiate that. So these things really came into uh, Russian and Soviet use after the Second World War. But you can see the design influences. Is it by chance or is it by espionage or whatever? I don't know, but the two guns are very closely tied in terms of basic operating principles. The gas systems are completely different. I'm talking just about the, the locking mechanism. All right, so now that we have that apart, I'll lube that up here in a minute before I put it back together. You can see how clean all that is. Let's wipe this off too while I got it apart. <laughs> all right, there we go. And now you can see inside the receiver and how clean that is. Looks brand new, absolutely beautiful. You can use the tip of a bullet, and this is your takedown lever for your gas tube. Use the tip of a bullet, swing that up. And then these always fit pretty snugly, but you can pull that out and now your gas tube will pop off. Your gas piston is inside and it's a short stroke gas piston. The STG obviously is a long stroke system, much like the AK-47. I'm gonna wipe off this residue here and this is how it looked before I started shooting it. Again, brand new, absolutely beautiful condition. I'm gonna take some of my Battleborn grease. I'm continuing to test this stuff. We're starting to use it in the cold weather now. So far, no issues to report. I'm gonna go ahead and lubricate this thing really quick with some Battleborn. Replace the, the grease that I wiped off. The bolt and everything is just absolutely new looking. Really, really impressed with that. I know I keep saying that, but it's so hard to find a good quality SKS these days. Uh, find them in good shape anyways. A lot of them I see coming to the gun store, people have fired corrosive ammo through them and they're all rusted or they're just not taken care of. Uh, it's hard to find them in like new condition. And when you do find them in like, <clears throat> like new condition, you're gonna pay a premium for them. Pretty much close to what you're gonna pay for this rifle. All right, so I got some battle born on everything. Let's go ahead and put the rifle back together. We'll start off, I'll put a little bit up here, try to make it a little easier to put together and take apart. Start off by putting our gas piston back into its tube like that. And you can, you can see it's a short stroke piston. That is as far as it pushes the bolt and carrier back before being returned. We, uh, and there is no spring in there, by the way. Put the front end in and then kind of move that around and then put your locking lever back down in the locked position and that's back together. Set the grease aside. Now you take your bolt and carrier and how they, how they marry up is really simple. They just set together like that, okay? Put them together, set them down. Back here in the receiver, you'll notice your hammer's right there. You're gonna have to push it down against the hammer spring. So you'll set it down inside there. Push down and then you have to push down on the magazine follower and your bolt will go home, all right? Now I'm gonna stick the recoil spring back in its place. Make sure this pin is drawn all the way over or you're gonna have a hard time getting it back together. Take your top cover, put it in place, push it forward and hold it forward because it's under spring tension now. Push your pin back across, rotate the lever down, and now your SKS is ready to go back to the range. The SKS has adjustable sights. You have elevation adjustments here in the rear and it's set up for a very optimistic thousand meters. And then you have like an AK, uh, front post that is adjustable for both elevation and windage and just like the AK you drift it left and right for windage and you have a tool sight tool that will go down in top that should be included in the cleaning kit uh, that you can actually access the front sight and screw it up or down to adjust your elevation to, to zero the gun out. As I mentioned earlier I believe it has a trap door back here I can feel the door but it, it's uh, there's no spring on it. I'm gonna have to take the butt plate off and see if I can find a spring to put it back in there and there's no cleaning kit inside but it did come with a goodies bag and let's open that up now maybe there's a cleaning kit in here somewhere so this bag came with the rifle I've yet to open it, it has a sling and an ammo pouch oh, these staples are gonna give me fits here I always manage to cut myself on these stupid staples too all right there's a sling. It looks like a th synthetic material. It's not real leather, or is it? 
No, it's leather, okay. Just has a weird texture on the back of it. But it's a new sling, a sling stud, which I will try not to lose. It appears to be made out of brass. Here's your sling stud. That looks original, has a little bit of corrosion on it, which would be normal for brass. And then your little ammo pouch. Let's see now, try to keep the wind from blowing that away. What do we have in here? See if we have any goodies in here. Nope. So no cleaning kit, but a military type ammo pouch. Has little pull tabs on it to bring the ammo up. Pretty interesting. All right, I know some of you guys are gonna ask. It's become something of a tradition here on the Military Arms Channel, and I'm gonna answer at least one of the questions. No, you know what, I'll answer them both. First of all, does it accept Glock magazines? The answer is no, of course not. Secondly, how does it fire 80s style from the hip? Well, let's find out. It's not gonna be as satisfying though. It only has 10 rounds. I'm gonna to have to give it a five on a scale of one to 10. 10 rounds just isn't enough. We're back at 75 yards just to see if these sights are somewhat on. I didn't bring a sight tool out and it didn't come with a cleaning kit or sight tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and load the weapon up. The 10 round stripper clip, we have our challenge steel target down range, which is just a little bit smaller than a, a man size. All right. The safety on the SKS is inside the trigger guard. It's right here. So this is the safe position. You'll notice how the stock's cut out. So you can just brush your finger down and put it on fire and it puts your finger right on the, the trigger. Let's see if this bad boy's on. Spot on. Well, that's nice and reassuring. So, at least with this example, it doesn't look like I have a whole lot of sight adjustment to do. I'm not gonna be able to put it on paper today. It's just a little bit too cold to be out here. We'll uh, go ahead and load up one more 10 round magazine here. These stripper clips are nice. Don't throw them away if you have them. I made that mistake years ago. Now I'm digging around trying to find all that I have. Wow, 20 for 20. This is a very shootable rifle. Yeah, I'm happy to have this one in the safe. There always seems to be a discussion on the internet, what is a clip and what is a magazine? This, ladies and gentlemen, is a clip. This feeds a magazine. The magazine on the SKS is right here. The clip feeds the magazine. That's how you keep the two straight. Here we're shooting some Red Army Standard 7.62 by 39 ammunition. This is 180 round, what they call a range pack. I picked this up from my friends over at Lucky Gunner. This ammo says it's made in Russia. I've seen it made in Ukraine as well from Red Army Standard. It's a 20 round box. And we'll show you how to load a stripper clip. So this is an empty stripper clip and this is a full stripper clip. The stripper clip works by having two pieces of spring steel on either side of it and it holds the round by its rim. So you have to put the rim on the spring, push it down and slide the round into place. Each clip holds 10 rounds. We have stripper clips in the US military as well. All right, so that's how you load a stripper clip. Very simple procedure. You'll probably wanna do this before you go to the range or you can manually single load the SKS as well. You don't need to use a stripper clip to feed it. And 10. And there you go. Your rifle's all ready to speed load. So out of curiosity, I'm gonna see how quickly I can fire 10 rounds, reload and fire another 10 rounds. And he's gonna do this on the iPhone uh, stopwatch app. So all right, let's do you it. go ahead and say go. All right, I'll give you a three, two, one, and then go, you go. Okay. okay. Three, two, one, go. Oh, it's so cold out here. Come 
Come on, baby. Ah. Stripper clips. Well, uh, the official stopwatch is 20.13 seconds. Oh, less than 30 seconds. We Not really bad. need to get a shot timer out here. That'd be cool. I have one up in the Jeep. You know what? Who wants to challenge me? Oh, I could totally do that faster than you. Okay. He is so game in this. I didn't even know this was going to be a contest before I started. Hey, you and know Sam's what? Sam's it Slow now. is smooth, smooth is fast. I'm going to win this thing, man. I'm extremely competitive. <laughs> All right, guys, I didn't know this was going to turn out to be a challenge. I kind of ran my mouth when I probably shouldn't have, but now Sam is going to get a crack at this, knowing it's a challenge. I'm going to use his watch, his timer, and on the count of three, the clips are in my go. pocket. I had to leave the clips in my pocket to start, so it's from the from the very start to the very end of the last round. Right. Your time was 20.13 seconds. He's trying to make sure I get it exactly right. Yeah. All right, so you're going to have to aim and actually get rounds. No, the the there's no. That's what I was doing. You, you can't no, just you did mag not. Dump. You just you just mag dumped. I did not. Uh oh. Okay, here we go. All right, when I say go, go. I'm not going to give you the countdown, okay? Wait, whoa, whoa. I, I gave you, you a three, two, one. Go. Okay, I'll give you three, two, one, go. All right. God, this has to be fair. It's like playing with guns with my... Never mind. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Eighteen forty-one. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Do I get do-overs? Nope. Oh. Jason, you're up. All right, Jason, you're up, man. All right, Jason, you got two stripper clips. Jason's gonna give this a try. I need to cheat or something. You shouldn't trust me with the stopwatch. <laughs> All right. Um, Do you want the countdown? Or you yes, just want to go. Three, two, one. Absolutely. Three, two, one. Go. You don't move until go. Okay. You got two stripper clips. I do. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one. Go. Already faster than Sam. Oh, oh! One round popped off the stripper clip. Ah. Oh, two rounds. And we have 23 seconds and 23.6 seconds. So, well, and you lost two rounds. I'll maintain the I'm not smiling after mag dump. <laughs> oh well, see that's what happens with the strippers, man. Those things are kind of hard to work, aren't they? My fingers are frozen. So you have steel on steel. We have steel cases with steel strippers and there's a lot of friction there and some of these stripper clips are kind of rusted. And my hands are just frozen <laughs> solid. Excuses. Uh, we're making excuses because yeah, Sam did yeah. better. Huh. The, uh, wind what was, do you think? The wind was actually blowing a little hard. Let's do a little mini democracy out. here, right? Every yeah. vote counts. Do you vote for me getting a redo? Yeah. I vote, so Sam. Sorry, oh, what man. the heck? That, that's know that's how democracy works, and you know, true democracy. So you lose. I get another redo, or a redo, not another one. Yep. All right. I abstain try. from voting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I get a do-over because I didn't know it was going to be a competition. Uh, yeah. So we did. We took a vote, and the majority rules here, and so I get a do-over, yep. and I have to go with this time. So if I totally screw it up, I just you make things worse for it. myself. Regardless. Sam won so far. All right, so here we go. Jason will give me the same countdown. Three, two, one, and go. Okay. And uh, I'll be, I'm ready when you are. All right. Three, two, one, go. Just barely beat him. I wanted a full second. 18.15. <laughs> I would say that's within the margin of error. No. <sighs> Feels pretty good to be a winner. Yep. Sucks to be Sam right about now. Yeah. <laughs> Probably my favorite feature of the SKS is the uh, integrated bayonet here. It allows you to practice your bayonet drills just like we did in the Marine Corps. Thrust, vertical butt stroke, horizontal butt stroke, and the slash. Marine Corps. I will say that this particular example of the Yugo SKS is a little bit, little bit handier. It's not as muzzle heavy, and it, that would be an obvious statement because it doesn't have as much metal hanging out over here in the front end of the rifle. But it just shoulders really nicely, points really nicely, and feels like a more conventional SKS. 
the Yugo SKS tends to be a little bit muzzle heavy and a little bit clumsy feeling and just a, a little bit heavy for a field rifle although i imagine a lot of that's just in my head because there's just less metal out there on the end but it definitely does feel to be a little bit quicker and faster handling like just a standard sks you do have the benefit though of having a flash hider out there if that's something important to you i think the rifle looks really sharp now I don't know how collectible these rifles are because I don't really know the background story on the gun and why it's in this particular con configuration. But what I can say is that it's absolutely beautiful and if you're looking for a like new, brand new SKS for $469, this isn't a bad option. It's that or Surf Gun Broker and try to find a very clean example of a Russian SKS or a Chinese SKS or something like that. But you're gonna pay a premium for them if they're in really good shape. So I think guys, with that, we're gonna check out if you uh, are looking for a fun, affordable 7.62 by 39 launcher, you certainly can't beat the SKS just in general. It's a fun rifle to take out and shoot with the family. The ammunition's certainly uh, commonly available and, and really affordable. Uh, again, I picked this ammo up from my friends over at Lucky Gunner, but you can also get on Ammo Seek and search for ammo there as well. I do that quite a bit. And again, just an awesome, fun little rifle to have. If you guys have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, of course, you can ask those questions down below. I do try to stick around for the first couple of days to answer the questions you guys may have. Also, if you would like to support the Military Arms channel, please swing by and check out Copper Custom. It's the best possible way to support us here at the channel. Also, if you haven't already, please be sure to check out Full30.com. That's Full30.com. We've taken all the web's best firearms content creators and brought them under one roof, and that is Full30.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for all that support over the years. We'll talk to you guys soon.